Austin, Texas, a beautifully diverse city, resting along the Colorado River, an oasis, cultural mecca. There's economic progress and innovative ideas, formerly perhaps even the live music capital of the world. But with all the growth comes constant change. If you moved here today, someone that moved here yesterday will probably tell you that it used to be cooler. But that doesn't matter, because like all constants, it will always be cool. Nickel City, a fantastic local haunt on the east side of town. Damn good drinks that won't burn a hole in your wallet? Check. Cool decor and vibe? Check. It's an everyman's kind of place. Jingle balls. Jingle balls. Is that what the drink's Way. called? Jingle balls. Whoa, is this one called Jingle Balls? No, it's uh, something entirely different, I just care. Santa Sipper. Yeah, that's it. Did you get to keep that cup? If you buy it. You have to buy it. I'll play it. It's a little uh, money and touch the cash. Are oh, the tiki, tiki stuff set up all the time? It's always tiki bar style? Yeah. No. No? No. no. Only for Christmas. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is our hometown. It's the starting point for each of us. So we want to take a deeper dive into seeing what makes this place tick. Glenn started by going to Revolution Spirits to interview Forrest and Aaron about what it's like making delicious, delicious alcohol in Austin. All right, Aaron, thanks so much for talking to me today. Absolutely. Man. I really, really appreciate it. So tell me about Revolution Spirits. We began with a gin. It was a purposeful decision of entering the market with something unaged. That's a kind of an economic reality that you, if you were to uh, try to make a whiskey or aging a spirit, it's just, it's just too many factors. Uh, but, and that's why you see people enter the market with a vodka, typically. And we decided that we didn't want to enter the market with a, a vodka because we wanted to demonstrate what we could do with flavor. What you're about to drink is uh, 120 some of us proof at this point. What did we say? It was 124 proof. Okay, wow. so this isn't a shot, and this isn't something you want to, you know, uh, you don't want to smoke a cigarette right at or light your cigarette while you're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but right out of the barrel. Already, you can you can taste how the gin's being altered. Exactly. And that's really, really cool. And it tastes fantastic already. I yeah. Like, I can already drink it, but it's it, nice. It would be enjoyable. Yeah. Absolutely. But but yeah, but it's it's got a little more time, but, but that's, you know, it's much different than it was four months ago, I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, when this is bottled, I will have one. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. Is it hard being in the distilling industry in Austin? Well, Austin's wonderful. And uh, the clientele is fantastic. They're open to trying something new. Uh, where we're becoming such a more touristed area, uh, when people are traveling, they're open for something right. new. Those two elements converge to make this here in the tasting room a great opportunity to experiment. The idea of being able to do small and collaborative, that's another reason why Austin's a great place. If you look at all of our partners that we use in branding, that collaboration coming together is a unique Austin thing. And, yeah. um, and it really makes it easier. Now, as far as the business is concerned, uh, all startups and small businesses face incredible challenges. We are a new industry. We face uh, challenges in terms of what we can do. We can't sell on Sundays. And right. our revenues here in the tasting room would double if we could sell bottles on Sundays. But so we're, we're existing under some old laws, but we're very grateful for the new laws that are allowing this to happen because this whole line of products before you couldn't exist if I didn't have the opportunity to taste you and potentially sell you on it on a Saturday. What we're gonna do is gonna give you the uh, Hill Country um, Negroni. Yes. So we're gonna start off with a little bit of grapefruit. I'm just gonna gently, just uh, a little bit of juice. We're gonna do equal parts of the Noche Pecan, Amico Amaro, and the Austin Reserve Gin. Try that up with a little bit of ice. Give her a shake. So good. Smells ready. Oh yeah. Nice. 
shorts. I'll finish her off a little bit. There we go. Enjoy. Thank you, sir. Mm. I love Negronis, and I most importantly love this Negroni. Here you go, cameraman. Would you like some man camera? <laughs> After Glenn became inappropriate, Todd was up to bat and he intended to strike out with some culinary magic. I am here with Ben Hollander, the pickle man. Yes. He's gonna teach me how to make kimchi today. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah, you're gonna learn how to make kimchi. This is a staple food in Korean culture. Around this time of year, in the fall, winter, all the families get together and make a bunch of kimchi for the whole year. They bury it underground and you know, okay. it lasts all year. And they just, you know, that's their food source. So we're not gonna bury it underground, yeah. but we're just oh, gonna. Like... All that goes in there, yes? Yeah? All that goes in here. With the clean hands. This is the Napa cabbage. Napa cabbage. This is a Korean Napa cabbage. Why is it called Napa? Does it come from Napa? Um, its dad's name was Napa. Okay. All right, now we're gonna peel some garlic. Okay. Give her throw a little bit of the skin in there for crunch. I try not to, but you know, it's like no. a little bit gets in there. And you could try that someday. But... Yeah. It's meditative. I think that's one of the reasons I like, I'm drawn to cooking. Just peel the garlic and think about the world, the universe. Yeah. Well, just well, what do you think about when you're, when you're playing the drums? Do you think about anything or are you kind of just in it? I'm thinking about the massive shit I need to take because of the barbecue I ate right before I got on Damn. stage. That's actually probably most of the time. Have you ever shit yourself playing a show? Um, absolutely. Sometimes when you wake up really early and you only get a few hours of sleep, it upsets your mm -hmm. digestive system. So I was at the this other commissary kitchen making rice. I uh, I felt the the sudden urge to take an explosive diarrhea. Mm, massive poo poo. <laughs> and I made it all the way to the bathroom, go to the first stall that I could get into, mm -hmm. and you know, I take my pants off and I start bending. You know, to sit onto the seat, and the second my knees bend, this shit just explodes. Just fall. Off my the, ass. the gates were open, and you know, like fifty percent of it got on the toilet seat. The other fifty percent <laughs> of it got like on me and on the floor. So, it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I had to cancel the farmers market though. <laughs> Pack our jar, and then we'll be done, and we can have lunch. I think that has enough salt. Mm. Mm. Look at what we've done. Cheers. Cheers. Gompe. Gompe. One layer of rice over the entire okay. seaweed wrap. Sesame oil, sesame seeds, and some red pepper powder. Here comes the kimchi that we mm. just made. Put that right in there. Grab it with your thumbs. Do that, that's your first move, okay? Now that it's tucked, tuck it in, okay? Now all the filling is in, mm -hmm. and you're starting to have rice contact with the seaweed, gotcha. and this is gonna be your glue that'll seal it. Kind of like, you know. The adhesive. The adhesive. And yeah, keep it tight. Just like you're rolling a blunt. Just like a blunt. Like a backwood. Like one of them backwood yeah. blunts. Okay. Okay, now keep going. Easy to thing to eat when you're like walking around outside. It's amazing. There you go. Good 
Oh, Where's my hair? Yeah, you have some right here. Oh, okay. We'll leave it there for later on the way home. Mmm. Mmm. Good. Let's cheers one. Those are some beautiful mm. kebabs. Mm. Cheers. With our palates cleansed, I took this opportunity to meet with one of Austin's premier punk rock bands, The Butts, and get an inside look on how to make an album. Thing. <laughs> but y'all have y'all have that. definitely like what toured. A good friend. We've done we've done smaller tours. That was what like you were telling me about the the bathrooms with no doors and shit like that. That's oh, dude. Oh no, that 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 was me. That was me and my other man. Uh, punching right there. Mm -hmm. What did it take? So or shotgun a beer? Okay. He's a renegade, dude. Bottoms up, bitch. I don't know if I can do this. Oh shit. <laughs> nope, it's not gonna work. <laughs> oh dude, bubble up. <laughs> oh god, oh god, oh god. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it's evil. Amateur hour. Oh, shit. In a city that exists mostly for escaping outside frustrations, at first, seemingly wants to just turn the music down. The butts would rather turn it up. It was time to move on and meet back up with the boys at a local dive bar. So we took the opportunity to show what it's like getting around in the ATX. Oh, over on, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd got a pedicab ride from drivers Danny and Tim.
live your life too. Exactly. Man, I saw there's a guy, the guy with the Game of Thrones one. Yeah. You know that guy? That was us. I, that was y'all? I, 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 I wrote it. Oh, really? Oh, that was y'all. Oh, shit. Yeah. Nice. That's amazing. But yeah. the, the, they did it two years in a row. I did it the first year. Yeah, HBO is a big hitter. They, they did Barry. You want to go? Let's go back through the alley. We'll go down 7th and then take the front of the road to 4th. Okay. That's how you put out a cigarette on a trash can. I got attacked in this alleyway one time by my ride. Really? Yeah, my ride started trying to kick me. Kicked me so hard he broke the seat off. Oh shit. I think I remember you telling me that. And then we, I, I stopped in the road right here in the middle of the road and got off the cab and punched him in the face. <laughs> Dropped him to the ground. <laughs> I stopped and I picked it up and then I just put it back on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else is gonna need this. That I need more than I do. Yeah. Did you sign a waiver? No. Did you? No. Oh, dude. Oh shit. We gotta sue these guys. Yo, what's, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> It's not fucking doing anything. Every time it beeps, it's not. Every time it beeps, it's not, uh. It's like locking, you know? Oh, maybe this thing is not, uh, charged? Like that. What is going on? It's stuck on this screen, like the payment screen. Like it just won't fucking start. I don't understand. <laughs> it's like See if this one likes my payment info this time. We're in luck, boys. Do not ride on sidewalks. Um so this doesn't really it's not ideal. I didn't say how to go the other way or find the long way. So, that's interesting. Ah! <laughs> ah! You could choose to ride a scooter or a, a, get a ride on a pedicab, but the best way to see a city like Austin is to drive a car. You get to go wherever you want. You have total agency over your position. You know, a scooter is only going to last so long on its battery, a pedicab 
driver can only pedal his little legs so far. Unfortunately, Glenn couldn't make it to the bar, so Todd and I decided to take on a local bar patron and converse with him to close out the show. Uh, I think it's a, it's a, it's a commonly uh, overlooked, I think it's in a space ball, without the beard, it's commonly overlooked little like gag in space balls that I love is like he drinks the uh, Perry Air uh, can. He's like Perry Air. Perry Air. Because, you know, they're in space, so you're just like, <laughs> Petty air. I'd say, my all-time, do you have an all-time door? Uh, 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 you know, the, the wavy yeah, gun yeah. hand, like, is that... A, okay, I, I can't do, I can't, I can't do Waco Kid. Like, that was never the one that I, I went for. Then he's like, I was always more, like, you can exactly. talk about anything about him yelling and everything, but he's, he's very, like, uh, like, almost chaplain vodka less where, where he's, he's more about hand movements and stuff and I love when he sit there on the hands yell at you. This is just a slice of one of the fastest growing cities in the States. And I hope you enjoyed the taste. A couple of sprays here, a couple of splits here. You're on your way. You're closing out the bar.